Good afternoon, church. Perhaps for you it's good morning or evening. For me it's a beautiful afternoon. As I look out the window and see the blue sky and the sunshine, one of the first things I do each morning is look out the window at our backyard and uh, I uh, reflect on how privileged we are and how God has blessed us with so much beauty around us for us to enjoy. At the beginning of the year, Pastor Rich encouraged the church board, encouraged strongly, to uh, share a doorstep story. I don't know about you, but I love the doorstep stories that people have shared over the past month. Thank you for doing that. But actually recording my own story, well, that's a different thing completely. Probably one of the least favorite things for me to do. But it's my turn, and I hope my story can be an encouragement to you as yours have been to me. I'm sure most of you know who I am, and I'd like to tell you a little about my story. My name is Dan Clausen, you probably know that. Judy and I will be celebrating our 50th wedding anniversary this year. We have four married children, 10 grandchildren, and each of them are tremendously special and we love them dearly. We enjoy spending time with them. Of course, spending time with them these days looks a little different than it used to. And hopefully once again, we can get back to what used to be. But we enjoy it nonetheless, and they are special times. Judy and I have been attending the Courtney Baptist Fellowship Church here in Courtney for the past eight years. But our connection with the church started in 1971. Judy and I had just been married three months when we moved to the Comox Valley. We'd both been raised in Christian godly homes where uh, being a Christian was not only taught, but it was, being, it was demonstrated. And so both of us accepted Christ at an early age. And living for Christ has always been a priority in our lives. So when we moved to the Comox Valley, one of the first things we wanted to do was to find a church we could be part of. So our first stop was the Courtney Baptist Church, the little church on the corner of Piercy and Cumberland Road that's now a daycare. Uh, and uh, we found it to be a, a small congregation of elderly people, mostly elderly people, maybe all. I should be careful what I say there because they're probably younger than I am today. But needless to say, we didn't think it was a good fit for us. And so uh, we ended up attending the Mennonite Brethren Church in Black Creek for the next 40 some years. So back to the early 70s, Dick Reeve was the new pastor in the Courtney Baptist Church. And I met with Dick Reeve to discuss the building of the church that they wanted to build on Lake Trail Road. The night after our meeting was a snowy night and Judy and I were gone for a walk. We met up with Pastor Dick and lo and behold, a snowball fight erupted. And we have been friends ever since. The outcome of that meeting, though, was that I was asked to draw plans for the construction of the church on Lake Trail. The next connection with this church was the construction of the gym. I was hired to be the general contractor for that construction, along with volunteers, lots of willing volunteers, once again, the gym was built. And then the administration wing was added, for which I was asked to draw the plans. And then the FOIA expansion project. I was asked to come up with some ideas and designs starting about six years before the actual project began. And of course, I was once again involved, uh, asked to be involved with the design and construction of the latest expansion once the decision was made to go ahead. So again, friendships and relationships were established and developed in the, with the planning committee particularly, all of which I'm blessed to know today and to be friends with, and I value that immensely. All of this was prior to us actually being part of this church as uh, attenders. In 2013, we made the decision to become members of the Courtney Baptist Church. Both Judy and I had been going through a difficult time in our spiritual life, lacking enthusiasm, 
gross. And I remember the amazing refreshing we experienced when we started attending this church. We were tired, hungry, and thirsty, and we were fed and nurtured from God's Word as we soaked in every message and encouragement. We were welcomed with open arms. Of course, it was construction time, and I had the opportunity to pitch in with all the other volunteers. It was my happy place. It was an opportunity for me to get to know many of you, especially the men, in a very short time. For me, that was the highlight of the entire project. I think it was in 2015 when Jim Hogarth approached me to consider becoming a board member. I wrestled with the decision for many months until I felt God was directing me to do so. I've been a board men member now for, I think it's uh, five years. What a joy it has been to serve with this group of men for over these five, past five years. What I appreciate even more is how you, the congregation, are so willing to participate, to contribute, to pray for, and to support the leadership of the church. It is amazing what can be done when there's enthusiasm, support, unity, and a willingness to get involved. I've shared a little of my story, and you might think, wow, Dan, you've had it pretty easy, and you've had a privileged life, perhaps. Or, well, I guess I've been guilty of editing my story, as, as we all have a tendency to do, to take out the tough things in life, to forget to talk about failures and disappointments we experience. This year I'm reading through the Bible chronologically. It always amazes me that the Bible doesn't edit out the tough times, the failures, the disappointments. I don't know of any of men of, men of God in Scripture that don't screw up or don't make mistakes, don't disappoint, and uh, yet God continues to be faithful. In the story of Abraham, we read that he makes the same mistake time and time again, not just one, a number of them. He, one of them is he lies about his wife to make life easier for himself. But still, God makes an everlasting covenant with him. Not only that, but even after the same mistake, God renews that covenant. And he goes even further by giving Abram a visual demonstration of that covenant. In Genesis 15, God asks Abram to prepare for a covenant in the way agreements and covenants were commonly made in that day. He asks Abram to kill some animals split the carcasses and arrange them with the path between the carcasses. And then the custom was that the, the covenanting parties, both of them, would pass between the split carcasses of the animals. In this way, the covenanters were saying, this same fate be to me and all my herds and flocks, should I not keep my promise. What I find so special about this demonstration that God is the only one who passes through the carcasses. Indicating the unique one-sidedness of the covenant. Isn't that amazing? That God will keep his covenant regardless of our failures because his covenants with us are dependent on our performance, our perfection are not making mistakes or sinning. Believe me, I've had my share of failures, disappointments, done things I'm not proud of. It would take far too long to begin that story today, but perhaps another day. We can share some of those as well. I am so thankful that my God doesn't depend on my performance, my perfection that his promises are from everlasting to everlasting. I trust that you also have the same confidence and assurance. Thanks for allowing me to share a small part of my story. Excuse the editing for now. 
and I look forward to continuing together to be the people God has called us to be.